Thank you everyone for your presence here today. My name is Jale Almai. I am the co-director of the Mandala Center for Change in Port Townsend, Washington on Coast Salish territory, um, land of the Sklalem and the Chimicum and a historic gathering place for many tribes, including the Macaw among others. So welcome one and all wherever you may be tuning in from today. This is the first Revolutionary Elders Council and I am honored to welcome today Gary Lilly, um, Brad Lilly, and James Robert Ford from the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. The Revolutionary Elders is a three-month project lifting up the voices of Black, Indigenous, and people of color who are elders in their own rights and traditions. If you're zooming in today, you'll receive a new passcode for November and December councils which will feature um, elder wisdom on spiritual activism and arts activism. Um, so if you feel moved and you haven't done so already and you're in a position, I would love to encourage you and invite you to make a donation to this project. Um, you, it goes directly to support this project and these incredible elders. And so you can look in the chat for a link to that, to do that on the Mandala Center for Change website. So, wow, I am so honored to be the steward and organizer of this project. And I can say it has been born from a place of deep listening, um, trust, and um, slowing down. And I believe that the answers to uh, our times live among us and within us. And I believe that um, the elders carry stories and wisdom to help guide us and sustain us for the long haul. And so on that note, I'd love to welcome now our speakers today and invite them to introduce themselves. I'd like to begin with Gary Lilly, who um, I've known for about nine years. He is a, a member, he's been for nine years, a member of the Mandala Center's Poetic Justice Theater Ensemble. Um, he's an, an accomplished poet and blues musician, educator, among many other things. Um, Gary, you have also been the inspiration for this project. So thank you so much for being here today and for helping make this happen. So I want to turn it over to you to kick things off, to say anything more by way of introduction. Uh, thank you. Um, I was a member of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, the North Carolina Collective in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And uh, and like currently I'm living in the Northwest. I live in uh, Port Hadlock. Uh, and uh, we feel like we're called to do this. So I'm gonna let the other guys uh, introduce themselves. I am uh, Brad Lilly. Uh, I am on the East Coast, North Carolina, a, uh, a member, alumni member of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Uh, uh, when I was uh, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina and High Point, North Carolina. All right, my name is James Robin Ford. I am uh, a mem member of the uh, Alumni Association of the Black Panther Party. I was a member of the party at, uh, at age 16 in 1969, uh, during turbulent times in the United States. And uh, uh, I've learned a lot since then, uh, dealing with the struggles in the United States and the struggle continues today, similar to uh, what was going on in 1969 and the early 70s. All right. Great. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your stories and perspectives today. Gary, would you be willing to start with sharing a little bit about the Panthers platform? Uh, the Panthers, the Black Panther Party uh, was 
was organized in 1966. And from the from its inception, it had a 10 point platform and program that, that everything that the Panthers did was based on that. And um, number one, we want freedom. We want power to determine the destiny of our black and oppressed communities. Number two, we want full employment for our people. Number three, we want to end to the robbery by the capitalists of our black and oppressed communities. Number four, we want decent housing fit for the shelter of human beings. Number five, we want decent education for our people that exposes the true nature of this decadent American society. We want education that teaches us our true history and our role in the present day society. Number six, we want completely free health care for all black and oppressed people. Number seven, we want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people, other people of color, all oppressed people inside the United States. Number eight, we want an immediate end to all wars of aggression. Number nine, we want freedom for all black and oppressed people now held in US federal, state, county, city, and military prisons and jails. We want trials by a jury of peers for all persons charged with so-called crimes under the laws of this country. 10, we want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, peace, and people's community control of modern technology. Uh, this was in 1966. And it has governed these actions, our actions since then. And uh, let me add uh, to that, that uh, one of the things that Huey Newton and Bobby Steele uh, added to our 10 point platform, uh, uh, what we want and what we believe. And when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitled them. A decent respect to the opinions of all mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold each truth to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights governments are instituted among men deriving the just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of the government becomes destructive to these ends it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their society and happiness. One of the things that we had to learn beside the uh, uh, 10 point platform, uh, what we wanted, what we believe, we, uh, we had 26 rules, uh, eight points of attention. Now, three main rules of discipline were obey orders in all your actions. Do not take a single needle or piece of thread from the poor and oppressed masses. Turn in everything captured from the attacking enemy. Our eight points of attention, speak politely, pay fairly for what you buy, return everything you borrow, pay for anything you damage. Do not hit, 
or swear at people. Do not damage property or crops of the poor oppressed masses. Do not take liberties with women. If we ever have to take captives, do not ill treat them. And so these are uh, some of the main things. Once we join the, the Panther Party, these are things that we had to learn, how to conduct ourselves and what we stood for. Uh, and so I just wanted to add that. Uh, 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 to add to, to to what you were saying, or to elaborate on what you were saying, Brother Brad and um, Fox, Mr. Liddy, is that uh, we were a disciplined organization. And I, you know, at an early age of, uh, you know, most of us were teenagers, uh, late teens, the early 20s. Uh, and we had to show respect for the people that we served. We were serving, we considered ourselves as servants of the people. And in, 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 in reflecting back on um, the 10 point program, uh, the program outlines things that are existing right today, which was existing 50 years ago. And right. that is one of the reasons why I decided to participate in this discussion is to bring awareness to young people today that that are out on the street pounding raising their voices that enough is enough and it is certainly it is enough it is time to bring the police brutality to the end of our brothers and sisters in the black community it is time for 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 the community to demand that we have police officers from our communities who are familiar with the people in the community and respect the people in the community. Like community policing. Community right. police. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the point seven of the ten point program. Those are the elaborations on that. And 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 and, and this is this is discussion with uh, Black Lives Matter and the young people, the young people movement that I like to call the young people movement, uh, who's standing up today and demanding an end to police and murder, uh, 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 murder of, of black people in the black community, uh, you know, and, and that's and that's why I'm here today, you know, to reflect back on that. It, it, it's an honor to be considered an elder <laughs> at the, at this time. Because uh, we were so young when we were uh, in the Black Panther Party and uh, functioning in the Black Panther Party. True. I was 19. Yeah, I was 16. I was 18 when I joined. Right. And it's, and, and it's, it's something, you know, I hope it's encouraging to young people today at 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. To get involved, to participate. Maybe you're not able to participate way, the way we did. We were on the front lines. We confronted the police with weapons. We <clears throat> and we stood up as men. But get involved, participate, uh, get to get to know what's 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 going on and how to change it. Yeah. One thing I remember um, from uh, this quote from Huey P. Newton, that the masses only respond to the level of their commitment. So with that, we know that different people who, who become activists at different times, they are, they are responding differently because they, they only, what, what is their commitment? How much are they invested in it? You know, so, so just recognize that, uh, that you will probably run into people just like we did. Yeah. You know, say more about that Gary I really appreciate that you all are bringing in that younger generation because I know that there are young change makers on the call and and tuning in now um, one thing that I'm noticing is a level of divisiveness among um, young people in the movement building work that we're doing um, can you speak to any experiences you've had around how to 
sustain a movement, how to um, pace yourself and um, support, you know, the, the long haul of, of doing activism and social change work. Uh, and I'm going to pass this on to everybody on this panel. But, the, but it is the long haul, believe me. I mean, like, here we are, you know, uh, and, and we're here, and we didn't even expect to be here, to tell you the truth about it, you know, but we're here now. And we all know what this is all about. And uh, it takes a level of commitment. But when you step out into the masses, um, that's our job is to, is to provide uh, so an education of what's going on, uh, you know, that's one of the things about the Panthers that we had to do. You you had to do this four hours of reading all the time. You're reading everything. You're reading the capable keep abreast of the changing political situation. And we want to step out here on the street. And when we cross people's paths, we want to be able to to uh, to uh, drop some science on them, so to speak, about what we see, what's going on, you know. No time for ranting and raving. It's time to be real. It's time to be real. Yeah, okay. I, I, the, the thing about the Black Panther Party uh, uh, from 1966 up until the, uh, the mid 70s was that we were considered the vanguard of the revolution in the United States. Or, in fact, the vanguard of the revolution around the world because we we express solidarity for, for all poor depressed people around the world. Uh, um, and and that that were conflicts with early in the beginning with, with different organizations uh, on college campuses and in the community and and, and, and for us, as far as having a, a direction, a, a, a goal and focus for the people. Uh, there were organizations that wanted to go one way and the other way, but eventually the Black Panther Party became the vanguard of the revolution in the United States, where uh, most organizations, progressive organizations, like uh, the Puerto Rican uh, uh, Panther Party, Brown Barrett Mexican Party, uh, White Panthers, uh, parties and hippies and, and uh, other progressive people stood up and respected the Black Panther Party as the Vanguard Party and, and, and followed the direction of the party. So Zeke, when you, when you talk about divisiveness, uh, you know, that did exist also at our time. Um, uh, and one of the things that that divided different groups was the actually their level of commitment you know uh just you know we had to be able to we knew we put our lives on the line every day uh but you had some who were not uh willing to put their life on the line uh you know while they would lend a voice but when push came to shove uh we found that there were some that just did not have the commitment and they would back up Today, you see that divisiveness. Uh, one of the things that I see is that young people today have, because we have so many different issues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I tell young people today, you know, you got to find the one, the battle, you got, you got to pick your battles. Uh, you know, uh, focus on something and work to change that. Uh, and and once you get that moving and get changed there, then you can focus on something else. Uh, you know when uh, and you know I applaud these young uh, people, young black and uh, men and women, and, and even uh, uh, our white counterparts who who have taken to the streets uh, in this time. But you got to understand all the dynamics that had to go into place in order for uh, us to have this revolutionary movement that's, that's going on today. How do you sustain it? 
well, you sustain it. You know, and I, I heard that as a question. How do you sustain it? You sustain it because you've got to have like-minded people uh, with you. And that was one thing about the Black Panther Party. Uh, we all knew uh, the danger that we were in. Uh, we all had that desire, that desire to make a change. Uh, you know, if uh, mm -hmm. if there had been, if there was another way, uh, we had seen that other way. It, it was not successful. We put our hope in uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, but he was shot down. We put our hope in Malcolm X, but he was shot down. Uh, so we understood that, that, you know, we, yes, we were going to be under attack, but we were under attack whether we did anything or not. Uh, Much like and, now. Yeah. So, you know, so you got to do something if you want to bring change. These people, uh, that the, the, the government, those people in authority, the powers that be, when it's their young people that are demanding change, uh, their children that they sit at the, day, the dinner table with and they're demanding change, they will listen. They'll listen. And so I want to encourage you young people to understand that this struggle that, uh, that you're in, well, you just inherited this struggle that I was in and I inherited uh, from those who came before me. It's right. the same struggle. It's the same struggle. And uh, so you know that this is a uh, protracted conflict that's going on. It's, it's, it's protracted. It's been a long, long time. You're just part of it. And you know what? You're in a better position today than we were back in our day. Uh, just because of the times that we're in, you got the social media uh, where where word can get out instantly. You can have flash mobs. The communications uh, in instantly. You know that's so important today. So I just want to say that to encourage you, young people, anybody that's listening, to encourage you and to understand that yes, it is sustainable, especially when you have people of the same mind. And understand this. If you ever decide to sit back and drop out, the man ain't sitting back and dropping out. No. Uh, you know, so he helps us. You know, uh, one thing, one of the sayings that we used to have was the, uh, the best recruiter we had for the Black Panther Party was the police department because they were coming down so hard on us and we were looking for an answer, looking for a way that we could change things. Uh, so the more they beat on us, the more we wanted to join. And I would also like to add, the conflict doesn't always come from uh, uh, the, uh, different ideals or, 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 or different philosophies. Uh, it, in our situation, it came from the FBI, led by J. Edgar Hoover, with the COINTEL program, counterintelligence program where they will create different organizations or build up certain people to be leaders who were really just kind of revolutionaries to cause conflict and cause division within the ranks of uh, different organizations. Right. Uh, the Black Panther Party was infiltrated uh, 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 with uh, informants that would uh, give the FBI uh, uh, information on what we were doing, when we were doing, how we were doing it. And uh, and that caused a problem with identifying what was going on and who was doing uh, what, you know, and, and with, 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 with leadership and different organizations. Yeah, and, and also, you know, for what Ford was talking about with the uh, uh, COINTEL program that Diego Hoover started, uh, what you what you are seeing is you're seeing a modernized version of that today. Uh, when you see Black Lives Matter and they're out in the streets protesting, and then this other group shows up, 
uh, and uh, you know, uh, go you know and 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 starts doing things violently or or to try to, to try to discredit this this movement. Uh, we back in our day we called those agent provocateurs, and they're still out there today. Uh, you can have a, 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 a peaceful protest, a righteous movement going on, and then there's somebody that's in that group, you know, gets something, you know, something jumps off because of somebody. And sometimes you have to understand they were sent there to do that, uh, you know, just to to put a negative connotation on the movement. And, and I see that working with uh, against the Black Lives Matter uh, movement today uh, when you hear people talking about it and they want to say that that you know they're this and they're that you know and you don't understand then what they really are and that there are there are other uh, forces that are out there to discredit that movement mm -hmm. one of the things I see now um, is there is a much stronger sense of of allyship uh, and you could look at the 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 marches. I'm just looking at um, George Floyd right now, just in those marches and stuff, and how fast people were able to mobilize and stuff. But uh, but the marches themselves were uh, were across the board with their diversity. It was just everybody, you know, that was yeah. that was involved. Um, particularly though, it was young people. Um, so so we know that that young people can mobilize and. And like uh and 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 then you had the right wing guys who also got involved. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times they lit stuff off. Um, there's a group of them that were shooting at the police stations and saying justice for for George Floyd. You know? I, I mean, that's provocateurs. That's who does, that's who lights this stuff up. And um and there has been some types of uh a discussion about the people that were really um, lit the rioting off in these demonstrations that they were people who who were there who were sent there just to just to cause that and the whole thing is this is what I was afraid of and that the violence itself was discrediting the movement that was there it shook people up you know so it was uh how do you how do you sustain it you well you deal with um, you deal with with the issues. The Panthers were not about rioting. Um, the Panthers felt like like a riot was a reaction instead of being a response. You know, and what you want is you want to have you want to have have the response to the issues and stuff. The reaction they are expecting the reactions and they are ready for them, and that's and that's why we can see them. Send um send these guys uh with their uh tactical gear and everything to to confront the demonstrators. You know, so because they are ready for they are they are ready to step in. And and one of my fears was like um I don't want to see martial law. And I think this was leading to that and stuff. You know, but like I can't say uh that I don't understand why people are angry, you know, and, and, I, and I don't, and I, and I know that that people who are angry will strike, they will strike. And so it's about being, um, looking to like, a, like, like, like Brad was saying earlier, it's about picking these fights and stuff that you're going to be involved in. Right now, we, we did a whole lot of work, but I'll tell you what we did. We did a whole lot of survival programs as well. Yeah, thank you, you know. for mentioning that. I so appreciate having a historical context to ground this conversation in your learnings from the past and how you're seeing things play out in the movement right now. Um, I'd love to keep going with the survival programs because um, the Han Panthers history is notable, especially on the community organizing front. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. been said that the Panthers spent more time protecting than fighting. 
And some people may not be aware of what you're referring to right now, Gary, the survival programs, um, mm -hmm. which are things like the healthcare, the legal aid, the food assistance, among other things. I think what we might refer to now um, as mutual aid. And I'm wondering if you could, if that's right, if that's a fair correlation, and could mm -hmm. you talk about, you know, what does it take to work outside of the system because um, we're talking a lot about the movement building, but those survival programs and even the movement work is happening outside of that of the, of right. the main system, and and especially the community resilience. Well, there are certain rules. For anyone, if y'all want to uh, mm -hmm. speak to that. Yeah, there are certain rules. First of all, uh, never accept government money to do it. You know, we did this on our own, and people say, "Well, how do you guys got?" How, how do you do do how do you do a breakfast program? Well, we did that because there were hungry kids going to school, and like and that's still an issue right now today, you know. But no one did anything about it until the pastors started doing it and stuff. Opening the our 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 headquarters of having kids come in fixing breakfasts. How do we get money for it? It was all from donations, grocery stores. Or in our community, we will just go and say, could you give something every week? I don't care if it's a dozen eggs for a store. And this is how we build um, our food up, you know, that we can do these things. And when we're doing that, then the other part of that is, it's just not us doing it. We will invite the mothers to, can you give a one day to help us serving or whatever that we need to do and that gets them involved too so it, it, it's a it's a community building thing now now we're doing this to serve the or the community and it raises a contradiction of how can these guys how can we do this and the government can't because the government didn't have a will to do it and we did it and that's the same way with all the programs Probably the, the one that most people know is is the breakfast program because it's every chapter all across this country, you know, right. every one of them. But there's other things too. There's a food program. There was there was a clothes program. We even had a pest control program. And in in and in North Carolina, we had a free ambulance service. Not just not just health stuff, health clinics, but we had a free ambulance service. Why? Because if you were hurt, someone, a family member was hurt and you called an ambulance, they were coming to the community and, we, and if the person didn't have $100, they cannot ride. So the need was we needed to have an ambulance and we did it. Um, you couldn't tell us that we couldn't do anything. As young as we were, we didn't believe we couldn't do anything. You know? You, so we, you been, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, so we studied, we come up, uh, we became EMTs, everything, yeah. just to serve the community. So while our objective was was uh, a revolutionary change, here we see Newton said that we recognize that in order to bring people to the level of consciousness where they would seize the time, it would be necessary to serve their interests in survival. And so we began developing programs which would help the people, help meet uh, the daily needs of the people. Uh, and what what exactly going on was, you know, like Ford said, we were the vanguard, but it was going to take more than just the vanguard to uh, fight this struggle, to be in this struggle. We needed all of the people. Uh, and until we could get all of the people and, and, and raise a level of consciousness, we had to meet the needs of the people. Those things that, that, uh, that, that were their daily uh, uh, sub, uh, needs, that, you know, that's why we call them survival programs, that the people could survive during these times. Uh, and, and, you know, there are things that are happening today uh, that were because of the Black Panther Party. Uh, because we started that uh, sickle cell anemia testing. Yes. Uh, when, uh, you know, that, you know, 
a disease that affected black and brown people uh, and the government wasn't doing anything about it. So we had to raise the level of people's, people's conscience about sickle cell and start that testing, uh, you know, with, from that breakfast program and J. Edgar Hoover looked at us feeding children in the community and called that one of the greatest threats to the security of the United States, feeding children. Uh, because uh, it, it brought our community together. We became self-sufficient. We took care of ourselves. Uh, and in order to stop, and they could not stop us from feeding children. And the mothers and the fathers and uh, 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 the community, they supported us because, uh, you know, they were saying that children were going to school hungry. And we say, you cannot learn. A child cannot learn while they're hungry. Uh, and so today, when you see uh, uh, children being fed in schools today, that's because, the, that's because the government, in order to stop us from bringing the people together, the community together, the government took it over. And so they did what we couldn't do. They could feed every hungry child in the country. We couldn't do that. We could only feed those hungry children in our community, selective communities for, for where we were. And mm -hmm. so I tell, I tell people today, you want to see revolution? That was a form of revolution there. We brought about a change just by feeding children. It's still being done today. Government's doing it. Because uh, if we did it, if we took care of ourselves and we did it, the, the community would organize and come together that much stronger. Thank you for naming those programs, and I know there are many others. You're, you're starting to touch on this um, aspect of community resilience, and you know we're in a time right now where um, many many folks are are feeling pretty beaten down in our in our spirits, and really turning towards one another to hang on during these very uncertain times. Um, what do you think of in terms of strategy, or even things that you're doing now um, that help? keep that that tight weave that fabric um around community resilience especially you know when you're up against so much is there any any thoughts you'd like to share on that aspect i would like to add something yes please um uh, well one of the main things that uh is in opposition to the movement the young people movement is that uh, the government, instead of the government, uh, 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 local and uh, national uh, law enforcement. And, and one, when there is a movement such as the Black Panther Party or any other progressive organization, is that the government attempts to criminalize the activities yes. of their organizations. We, the Black Panther Party, were out with survival programs to serve the people, feed hungry kids before they go to school. We realized that kids could not learn with on a hungry, uh, 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 empty stomach and hungry on an empty stomach. Uh, we realized that we needed an ambulance service in Worcester State of North Carolina where we would be able to get our own people to the hospital in case of emergency. Uh, Brad mentioned the sickle cell anemia uh, 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 testing. We had clothing programs. And those things were in service to the people. They were not criminal. But the government attempted to criminalize those things. And once they are able to criminalize the organization, that, could just, that justifies their reasons to go in and attempt to destroy the organization and that's what i see today with this young organization young movement going on with the young people they have to learn to and realize that the government is not going to lay down and just accept everything that you want or give you everything that you want they're going to oppose you until the people rise up and support you and the strength lies within the community. 
we had to go into the grassroots, go to the grassroots of the uh, uh, of community, and and, and and deal with that. Bring in the people. That was the survival of the Black Panther Party. The people. The protect the people protected them because they saw the good. They saw the good that, that the Black Panther Party was doing for them in the community. So so today, uh I try to stay involved in, in, as much as possible. Uh one of the things uh we're doing right here in my area of High Point, uh because of COVID nineteen. Uh, I have a a a maintenance uh, company, uh, so we're we're providing a free in-home COVID nineteen disinfect for uh, houses for senior citizens. First of all, for dis uh, those who are disabled, and anybody that that has had COVID in their uh, home or uh, from their family, we will come in, provide a one-time service. Uh, to totally disinfect your home, and then after that, uh, once once you know that your home is safe, then you have to do the things that are necessary because of COVID nineteen. You've got to you've got to monitor who who actually comes to your house. Uh, uh, wear face masks. What do you know? Do the hand washing and all of that. Uh, a few weeks ago, we gave away seven hundred uh, boxes of fresh fruits, vegetables, protein, uh, and milk you know, in our community. 700 boxes of, 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 of groceries uh, was given away. Uh, that was maybe about three weeks ago. And so we're, we're doing these things uh, to be a help to our community. The Black Panther Party has always act, uh, advocated for uh, community reforms uh, and you know we expanded uh, uh, our our voice and our actions to for other social reforms uh, prison reform and uh, we held voter registration drives we organized free food programs uh, and uh, you know free uh, health clinics uh, we started schools, freedom schools, uh, in nine cities. Uh, we did, you know, the uh, uh, we we helped transport people uh, to the prisons. We, you know, we we did all of these things, and it was we called it survival. We're doing it today, uh, uh, individually. Maybe not as the Black Panther Party, but there are so many of us who are still involved still doing things within our community and it's all based upon that training that learning mm -hmm. that teaching that we got when we were very young how to serve your community and so we're doing uh these type of things e even uh today you can find us still mm -hmm. out here still working still doing things now i, I gotta tell you uh we you know there's a reason why you call us elders okay uh because you know our legs aren't as strong as they used to be i am trying to reach young people uh and trying to get them to understand and to see that you know we still have to serve our community it's you know you can get out in the street and you can you know you can raise your fist power to the right. people and all of that but when the marching is done okay then there's then it comes time for some real work for real change and so the marching that's necessary the protest that's necessary but also at the same time you got to win the heart of the community you got to let these people know that are out here that are our neighbors that 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 uh look like us okay that we are trying to do things to better ourselves and bring us all together mm -hmm. you know and that's what is going to, you know, and let me go back to that sustainability. First of all, to, you know, sustainability means your ranks have to increase. Uh, you got to convert more and more people. You got to change minds and change hearts. 
and you got to educate people. And once you can see it, that you know, uh, 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 people can understand that you know you you're not out here by yourself. You're not right. you're not going through this struggle by yourself. You got other brothers and sisters who are willing to step up, stand by your side, speak up for you. You know all all of these things. And and I, I've got to say this: I'm a pastor today. I tell my church that, uh, you know, I learned from the Black Panther Party, feeding, uh, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, uh, visiting those who who are who are sick, helping the widows. I learned that from the Black Panther Party before I ever read it in the Bible that Jesus said, "This is what we're supposed to do." Uh, so, you know, uh, I let people un know and understand that when I'm out here in the community and I'm doing these things, this is my ministry. This is my calling. I understand that today. Uh, I, I, joined, I joined the Black Panther Party. I wanted to get in the struggle. I wanted to, to, uh, to make a change and to make a difference. But I understand that today was this has been my calling uh, ever mm -hmm. since I was a teenager. Yes, sir. One thing I, I would like to like to add here, um, when we had rallies in, or like like gatherings like that, and I think that's something that could happen now too to help sustain uh, the uh, the movement. Now, every time we had a rally, um, we are serving. There's also a way to serve some particular need in the community that we would do, and and, and yeah, if we have a gathering like that and we have a lot of people coming well why that's a time of also for voter registration that's a time to 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 distribute food that's the time all these things were happening there's you can do all these things and it serving the community is what is going to to um to sustain the movement now is to address some of these needs, and and now I've been looking at this these needs. We can see that um, that because of the economics uh, and the shutdown and everything uh, for uh, COVID, it has impacted on a lot of people's lives. There are things to do. There are things that need to be done. You know, and I can't sit there and just say, um, well, let's just do th th this. But what we did is we had group discussions and determine what we needed to do. And then, and then, like I said, like, um, there was no sense in, of, of us thinking that, that, that something was out of reach for us. We just went for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the survival program, uh, and as, as, as Ben mentioned, were our survival. It was the, the Black Panther Party survived through through survival programs and and providing services to the people, and in return the people protected us, and so, and that's what sustained us. But uh, that were things that drew people in to the party, like uh, the weaponry, uh, the guns, the posters with Bobby Seals and Huey P. Newton. Bobby with a 45 on his side and here he knew with a, a, a ride pump shotgun. But those posters and images were strong images. Matter of fact, though that that that, that the poster with here he knew with the shotgun and Bobby Fields with the 45 was one of the things that brought me into investigate the Black Panther Party, <laughs> find out what it was about. That yeah, and once I got, got there, I understood it wasn't just about the gun. The gun, you know, was, yeah. It wasn't just about the gun. It was, it, it, it was the gun was for the purpose of of, of, of protection, self defense. And, right. We we drew a line of demarcation, and 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 and, and if, if, if 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 the if the police or we called them pigs back then, pigs crossed that line of demarcation, we 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 would use the gun. And, we, and in some instances, we had to use the gun. Like, for and, instance, and, you, you can't just kick in our doors. Right. You, you couldn't just kick in our doors, or you just could come in our community and shoot people down or murder people, like like uh, what happened to uh, George. Um, 
George Floyd and, and so many other black black men and women uh, in, in recent years, in recent months, uh, you just couldn't do that without repercussion that uh, some uh, the black people would, would, would uh, the black Panther Party would defend that, not necessarily with uh, force, but we will protest and demonstration as the kids or young people doing the day. Uh, but it, 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 my thing is that we, uh, there are there's a lot of support for Black Lives Matter right now, the Black Lives Matter movement and other movements. Financial support. There is uh, you have athletes, actors, and and and, and, and a, a host of other people who donate millions of dollars. Those dollars should be put into the community to to help the community, build the community up through businesses and survival programs. And, and, and especially during these times now, with the COVID and the lockdowns and 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 and, and or, uh, um, quarantines and hospitalization of so many people around it and, and, and death around the country. Programs are needed. Use that money, Black Lives Matter, for the survival of the people. Put that money into survival programs. They are they are so effective. I'm talking about like on um, Black Lives Matter. And you know that they're effective. You know, because when we look at uh, at at the at the the protests and we see how who they draw you know, how many, how many community people, how the community comes together. I'm just looking at Portland because this is where I live in this area here. This was like, a, this was a hundred something days, you know, of, of, of these, of these um, protests and stuff. So they, 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 they draw the people and stuff. And that is why, and, and you want to know how effective they are? They are so effective that the government will call them terrorists. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? Yeah, once, once they start doing that, that's when you know you are on the ball. Doing it right, yeah. That, you, that you're doing it right. about the BLM movement, but I'd also like to invite the folks who um, are tuning in right now to um, consider whether or not you might have a question that you'd like our speakers today to address. This is a great moment to um, connect with that question and add it to the chat. Um, and then we'll present that. So I just wanted to take a moment to pause to let people get thinking about that question that you might be curious to to pose to our speakers today. Um, and then we'll we'll loop back. So let's pick it up where we left off with the BLM movement. Now I've I've heard um, a number of y'all talk about training and um, you know community resilience, really looking like how you take care of each other and how you use actions and times where you come together. Um, to include that, um, de those actions of taking care of one another. Um, mm -hmm. when, we, when we zoom out just a little bit and we look at the larger movement for Black Lives, um, you know, are, are you, how are you seeing what's happening now in that way with um, how your experiences were then or what would you wish for? Like, what is your wish right now for how things are rolling out? And then we'll get we'll get some questions going from the audience. All right. First of all, I wish more power to the people. Uh, uh, you know, I just I, I want to give encouragement again to to those uh, young people uh, who are out there in the streets, who are lifting up their voices, who are trying to make a a, a, a difference in this world to to make this a better place. I wish uh, that, you know, much success. I wish that uh, you guys could, could uh, uh, keep it going. And, and, and at the same time, that more young people will be, uh, their consciousness, uh, consciousness uh, uh, level can be raised, that uh, they can join the struggle, you know, uh, I wish that older people uh, give you the support that you need and not just sit back and watch this revolution on TV, uh, you know, but get involved in it, uh, you know, and it's going to take more than just, just uh, uh, the street level person, uh, you know, those people who are 
uh, uh, in in the corporate offices, those people who who get up and put on uniforms every day, those people who are in our courtrooms making decisions about our people, that their uh, level of awareness can be lifted up also, and from where they are, they can begin to make a change. And so let, let the change come not only in the streets. Let the change come not only uh, sitting at the dinner table, but let it come in the courtroom and in and in the boardroom. Uh, uh, let it let it come from from uh, those people who are, who are, are business owners to 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 understand that that you've got the resources that you can help uh, help these uh, make a change that you can make a difference. And I wish that we could tear down this system of systemic racism uh which is the root cause of all of our problems that's a good wish of uh, um uh, brand and i and i I'm, I'm wishing with you on that wishing and praying for that uh yeah it's, a, it's good it's just a systemic racism it, it, it is a problem i think it's more of a problem today than it was um 50 years ago when the black panther party was uh over 50 years ago when the black panther party was established uh by here Newton and bobby seal uh that was racism uh 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 yes that was in some cases blatant racism you know um uh, with uh with uh in sports hollywood and 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 and, and around uh in other institutions but the systemic racism today is 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 is, 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 is it's institutionalized. It's institutionalized to the point where it's like a brick wall or ceiling. You can only go so far if you have a certain if you are a certain color, and uh, and and certain things are not uh, you're limited in, in 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 your expectations because of your color. But there's no ceiling to uh, 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 um, black people or brown people. There is the possibility of, and my wish would be to for the people to be able to reach their goals without racism standing in their way. That would be my wish. Yeah, my wish. My wish is that these that these these young people keep the pressure on until until they stop shooting down people in the street. Please said thank you, thank you all. Um, there's a couple questions coming in, um, two kind of logistical that I want to just address because they'll be quick. Um, one is to just. Uh, mention that this is being recorded and that registered participants will be sent the link and also will live on the Mandala Center for Change YouTube channel. So you can just um, search for Mandala Center for Change there and, and find this recording. Um, also, Brad, you mentioned this service, the cleaning service that you're doing. Um, yes. And someone is curious if there's a way to donate to support the work that you're doing there. Is that something you're receptive to receiving donations? And if so, can you let folks know how to do that? Okay. Um, and you can also you know, put it in the chat or we can follow up with that if, it, if, if you want. But okay. I invite so you to do that. For anybody that, uh, that uh, wants to mail us a donation, address it to high point peacemakers that's the name of the organization we are the peacemakers uh 1300 furlough avenue f-u-r-l-o-u-g-h avenue high point north carolina 27265 you can also cash out to me uh bradford lily uh if you have cash out uh so that's uh, two ways that that uh, you can, uh, and when you cash out, please please put it in the notes. Uh, what it's for. Um, uh, so you, those, those are two ways that that you can uh, donate, and I I appreciate all donations. 
uh, you know, and anybody that um, that wants to provide this service in the area that you are in, uh, you can contact me uh, through my uh, email. And, and Zeke, uh, I guess you can put that up for people. Contact me. I'll tell you what you need to get started uh, uh, and how you can do this and make it safe and, and make it a program that uh, 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 will address the needs in our community. Great, beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you to the viewer who um, was asking about that. Um, okay, and now for something maybe a little bit more median. Um, during these questions, it, it could just be anyone who feels inspired to answer the question so we can get as many questions as in. Don't um, feel the um, need or pressure to have to have everybody answer unless you want to. Okay. Um, so here's a question from Kat Z. Curious about how you feel about AIM and Native Solidarity. Um, how do you see past alliances and present alliances? Uh, the American Indian Movement, they have been here since about as long as, as, as we have, you know? And, yeah. and there's always been that solidarity. Um, we recognize that all, uh, the struggle of all oppressed people, especially, especially people within the United States, within these, these continental walls here. Um, that we can recognize that even though in worldwide struggles, but but most definitely, how do how how do we feel about AIM? Um, I get disappointed every time that I that the uh, that we don't have a president that releases some of those people that are held in jail from the '60s and '70s, um, which is kind of there's been a whole lot of silence about AIM and stuff, you know. So maybe something needs to be done there to to um, to get the word out or just make people aware of 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 like Peltier and all these people, you know. Great. Thank you. Um, another question from um, coming in from our local BLM chapter here in Jefferson County um, regarding money, taking money from the government. That was something I think Gary, right? You already you said. I'm already. I'm, I'm already on it. I'm already on that. Let All right. Well, let me ask you a question here because there there's a dynamic tension, you know, around how to um, proceed for some folks. Um, how do you feel about um, social and racial justice oriented nonprofits like BLM or others um, mm -hmm. using grant money, which may come from the government to fund um, survival programs? Do you think that nonprofits can make the changes we need? I think that anytime um, you are dependent upon any type of government funding for, for your program, it's, it's a survival program uh, that once the government starts funding you, they absolutely have control of your program. So, and this is, this is why we, we had a policy about not accepting any money from the government, not to have any control, not to let them have control over us. Um, we can look at organizations that, that, that did accept money from the government uh, operation push and all this kind of stuff and how and how quickly they became um, really passive, non-productive, because that money comes with stipulations of how you can respond to anything. So we didn't accept any government money. Okay, great. Um, there's another question here, kind of um, instead of uh, alliances like AIM, um, talking more about like the accomplice or the allies who are out there doing the movement building work right now. Um, mm. What would you wish from um, accomplices and allies, you know, from what have you found to be helpful or harmful from the past that might help inform our current action. Um, I think Brad, you you and Ford had kind of mentioned this earlier about um, the shape of the movement now and who's showing up for it. 
Um, do either of y'all have thoughts on, on that question? Yes, I'll speak shortly on it. Um, the thing of the Black Panther Party, we knew that uh, we had to communicate our ideas and thoughts to the people. Uh, we had a Black Panther Party newspaper, which was distributed across the continental United States and uh, overseas to different company, countries like Africa, in uh, uh, continent of Africa, um, uh, and and uh, Latin America, South America, uh, and people were informed. We were able to inform and pass on our ideals our aims and goals. Our 10-point program was in the paper each and every week. And that was one of the ways that we were able to communicate with different organizations and different people because they could be what we wanted. They could read what we were doing. They could read about what was happening and when it was happening. And they could participate in those programs and actions in their local community or, or they could travel to other places because they were informed through the newspaper. And that is key, communications. We, we realized that through the content of, of uh, counterintelligence pro FBI program that the FBI was using the news media to cause divisions among different organizations in the struggle in the United States. They would manipulate the news, which became unreliable, but there were other means through the Black Panther Party newspaper and other, other uh, progressive newspapers. Communication is the key. Right, let me, let me uh, say this. Uh, in order to you know to bring it up to date for today that this is not a race struggle this is not black against white uh uh and i know that there are a lot of forces and organizations that want to make it seem like this is what it is uh even to the point when we say black lives matter we get counted with all lives matter our blue lives matter uh but you know we saying black lives matter because it's black people who are being shot down in the streets who are who, who are denied their 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 civic their human rights and civil rights uh but it's never been it's never been a a race struggle uh and that's why when i when i saw uh uh protest movements uh happening today and uh white people joining those movements and actually i went to a couple of marches uh in raleigh north carolina uh and uh at uh, one was one of those places i actually saw more white people than i saw black people uh and you know and when and when confronting uh the authorities or confronting the police they actually got in front of the marchers uh, you know, so it's a thing that I have to bring back to this point, you know, uh, if they're going to shoot into that crowd, then they're shooting their own children too. Uh, that, that it has to be understood. Uh, so when we talk about alliances and, and different organizations coming together, uh, first of all, we first of all have to have to remove the the, the veil over our eyes, you know, to, to understand that we're all in this same boat together. Uh, uh, you know, poor and oppressed people. Uh, and we're going to need, what's going to turn the tide is when that is more than just us out there. Uh, but when, when uh, uh, there are black and white and people of different color and different stations and uh different walks of life all join together and uh you know don't let the enemy divide you with uh you know the, you know 
gay rights is still human rights. Uh, you know, that type of thing. Uh, you know, women's rights is, is still human rights, you know. Uh, so we want you want to put a, 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 a category on it. And I say that if you are for uh, uh, equal rights, then that's for equal rights for everybody, regardless of your, you know, sexual preference or your religion or your color or anything like that. Don't let those uh, uh, those those tricks be played that begin to separate us. Uh, you know, how can you be for for equal rights, but not for this group of people? Then you're you're part of the problem. You're not the solution. Uh, you know, you, you're not for you're mm -hmm. not for the equal rights of everybody. Uh, you know, so when you mention uh, like aim, you know. And uh, I see them, you know, we are them and they are us. It's the same struggle. Same it's, struggle. It's, it's the same struggle, you know. Uh, you know, so, you know, yeah, we're supposed to get on those front lines with them and they're supposed to get on those front lines with us. And we can't say that, that that's, that's, that's their movement. This is our movement. When we, the movement has, all the movements have to come together and understand that this is just, we're all in this struggle together to make a change. I want to see change. I want to see change. I actually thought I would see freedom in my lifetime. Well, I'm still living. So still a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> still a possibility. Uh, but I know that it's a, it's a prolonged, protracted struggle. Uh, you know, and I can relate to that because right here at high point it was supposed to be the international city of the world the international city of the world we fought for 25 years to get a street named after dr martin luther king 25 years for a street to be named when i saw some of these other i saw some country towns uh they had a they had a dr martin luther king street and we still hadn't had one you know uh, that might seem like a small thing to some people, but I'm, I'm saying this, that struggle lasted 25 years, okay? We didn't give up. We didn't quit, you know? And that's what, you know, I want to stress to, uh, uh, to those people who are listening, especially you young people, don't give up. Don't give up. There may be discouraging times, but you're not, in this by yourself you're not in this by yourself you got people look i'm cheering for you uh you know i really am and if i could help you you know i'm willing to help you uh, mm -hmm. uh i've got a whole lot of years you know uh behind me which i'm told equates to wisdom so you know I can, while you have the energy and we have the wisdom, you know, we've been in this struggle for a long, long time. We can tell you the things that we did that were successful. We can tell you the things that we did that were not successful also. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, and I don't want to paint the picture that, you know, everything we did turned out golden because, you know, it, it didn't. There were some things, it was righteous. It was the right thing to do but it just didn't happen the way that we wanted it to happen. But there were so many other things that, that did happen the way that we wanted to happen. One thing, and I just want to jump back, and I know I'm jumping all over everywhere, but that WIC program that we have today, supplemental food for women with children uh, that the government has today, Black Panther Party started that. We started that. And so when you ever want to see any type of, you know, were we successful? You know, yes, we had our revolutions. Uh, that's a form of a revolution when we can, uh, we can implement a program that is so successful in order to take the success away from us, the government takes it over. And so they, uh, we have that WIC program today where the Black Panther Party started that. Yes, a lot of programs that the government has 
right now. This is Black Panther Party started. You know, it, it reminds me of, of when in the 60s there were a lot of evictions. People would get their furniture put on the side of the road, on the curb, because they didn't pay their, their rent on time or rent at all because they didn't have the money. And um, uh, in Worcester State of North Carolina, the Black Panther Party said that was, in, that was enough. We're not going for it anymore. Um, when, when, the, when, the, when the police or when the county sheriff would put people out, we would put them back in and, uh, and, and let them know that it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a human right for people to have shelter. It's what, matter of fact, was a part of our 10 point program. Decent houses and shelter. Uh, and we will put them back in. Now, today, under a COVID conditions, the government is have a moratorium on evictions. It can't be done. So the fact that the part, I, I, I said, we, we, we brought that to the attention of the uh, uh, law enforcement that, that you just can't put people out on, on the curb under, uh, in, under uh, diverse conditions, you know, uh, under conditions where they, they're not able to afford to pay their rent. And uh, one of the things that made the Black Panther Party so strong with its members from within is that we respected our elders. Although they didn't have the education of the elders of the day uh, that we have right now, they have, they, our elders 50 years ago had wisdom, had understanding. They knew and realized what the struggle was all about, although they were not able to participate in the struggle. They supported us. They welcomed us in their homes. We ate spaghetti dinners with them. <laughs> we spent the night on their couch with them. We got up in the morning and helped them out with their, their daily chores. And we were all on the struggle. We were all in the struggle. We were all in the struggle. And we recognized that. And that is what young people have to do today. Recognize that we are all in this together. It is a struggle. Something was said earlier about, and I think it was Brad that said, like, uh, what you do is you find is you find the one thing. If you have, have nothing else, find the one thing that you can commit to and that you can work towards and stuff. And like, you know, and do your part in there and stuff. You know, it's just if that's what you have time for, that's what you have energy for. Then, then, then you do that. You do that. You work on, on your issue because there's, um, there are so many things that 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 we need to step into, that you're never gonna go wrong just by doing just by doing anything. You know, it's it's all working for the same same interest there. So um, get busy and stuff. And that's is why I see young people doing. They, they are, they they have their their uh, key issues and stuff. You know. That they're working on. Um, they're also there's also um, they also are leaderless, or they're working in small collectives and cadres and stuff. You know, which yeah. which kind of like takes the heat off of them because there's no one to attack, and the only people that they can attack like that are it's Black Lives Matter because of because of of, of how that was organized and stuff, you know? But the rest is, is like, um, the word the word goes out, everybody has a phone, everybody has a phone and stuff. So word goes and it's just, you know, get involved, get involved. There's something that you wanna do, you have to be the one to do it. Powerful statements from each of you. I'm my cup is so filled. I'm feeling so inspired and humbled. Thank you to each of you, Ford, Brad, Gary. Um, you have, you have, um, yeah, you've really opened my eyes today in grounding with your perspective how to stay in the work, stay in the movement. Thank you so much um, to oh. each of you for being willing to share um, so honestly and openly. We covered a lot of territory today, and um, I can just feel the depth and richness of the lives and experiences that you're calling forth to share with all of us today. 
Well, so thank you. I, I'd like to also bring to the attention of the um, people that's tuned in. Uh, don't forget about the political prisoners, the prisoners yeah. that sacrificed and were locked up on trumped up charges or uh, uh, trumped up government charges that they were accused of stuff that they did not do, but they're still in prison at 40 years, 30 years. Don't forget them. Find out who is a political prisoner in your local area or somewhere in the United States and give them, write them, give them your support. That's a great call to action. Um, Brad or Gary, would you like to end with a call to action? I know there are a lot that have already come forth. Is there anything more that you'd like to say as a closing remark? Well, well, I want to thank uh, the Mandela Center for Change for, for like, I'm putting this on. Um, and like, I appreciate what they do in the community and it's been, it's, it's been fun to do anything with them with you guys you know and so I, I want you guys to know and i want to thank everybody for like uh for uh coming to to hear what we had to say i hope we didn't talk your ears off too much and stuff and hope you got something from what we said you know and but i appreciate you all being here thank you yeah thanks gary and, and i like to thank the amanda center also uh one thing you know in closing let me say this the, the central guiding principle for the Black Panther Party was an undying love for the people. Uh, uh, and that still, you know, is within me today, it's within us today. Uh, we came together, the Black Panther Party in 1966. Uh, we focused, we, we began focusing on one thing monitoring the behavior of the police and then all this other grew out of it started in oakland california it went all over the world uh 50 years later here we are over 50 years later uh still involved still we still have that undying love for the people and yes that's all that's all it takes. That's all it takes. That, you know, that fire will forever burn. Yes, sir. Or is Thank there you. anything you'd like to say in closing? Any call to action or anything you'd like to add? Yes, um, it's a, you know, Brad brought it, uh, brought it out that this is a protracted, protracted war, a protracted struggle, and it takes time. Uh, you don't always see uh, results instantly. It's not an instant, uh, the struggle is not an instantaneous uh, event. Uh, you protest and, and demonstrate one day, and the next day you uh, go back to your regular lives. But it's a constant struggle. Once you accomplish or achieve a particular goal, the struggle is not over. You have many, many, many more goals to accomplish. There's many more situations where, you know, uh, 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 the people uh, 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 are, are, are dealing with uh, dire issues, issues that affect their lives, this, it, uh, uh, a matter of life or death. And um, I can remember um, one of our elders, when I, we were in the Black Panther Party, Miss Lee Faye Max, she was a family member of of a uh, of, of, of member of the Black Panther Party, she would say, get out and do something. Go help somebody. <laughs> and I love that because there's always something that you can do to help. Yeah. You know, help the people, struggle with the people. <laughs> That's what I got to say to the young people. Don't give up. It's protracted. Oh. All power to the people. All power to people. people. Much love. Thank you, everybody. If you haven't already, you can go to the Mandala Center for Change website um, and find the Revolutionary Elders Project there to make a donation to support these elders and support this project. Um, sign up and register to attend. There's two more um, councils coming up focusing on spiritual activism, bringing our spirit and heart to movement building, as well as arts activism. 
And so thank you again to the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Um, these wise elders, you are fully in your right as elders. I could feel the wisdom coming today. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, we'll get this recording sent to those registered and up on the Mandala Center for Change YouTube channel. And so until then, stay well, stay healthy, and uh, stay in peace, in power. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much to all Thank of you. you. Be safe. All right. God bless.